Welcome back to D&D Beyond. And as we discussed on Tuesday's stream, it is a new year, and I choose to believe that we are all using milestone leveling, which means we are stronger, and we can do new cool things we couldn't do before, and we are all leveling up. So to help me talk about that, what it means, and how you do it on D&D Beyond, please welcome back Michael Galvis and the amazing Sam DeLev. How y'all doing today? The better for this. I'm very, very, very excited to talk to both of you. I'm super excited for today's stream. So in advance, if you have questions about leveling up, uh, about D&D stuff you want to hear from these two, we should have some time in the back half of today. Um, so please throw those into chat over the course of the stream. And the amazing mods are collecting those and passing them on. But let's start with leveling up in Dungeons and Dragons. How do you do it? How does it work? Um, the basic beginning point, as with all things when you're trying to figure out how something works in Dungeons and Dragons, at least for me, is I go and I check the player's handbook. So I, uh, you'll notice most of my answers are then I go and look it up again. Um, but that's just kind of my, my D&D policy. The basic guide to what leveling up means in Dungeons and Dragons is in the player's handbook at the end of chapter one under Beyond First Level. Um, we love beyond the things in general here, so it's very nice and on theme. Uh, and this <laughs> describes the basic mechanics that uh, whether you are using experience, which is the sort of base written in mechanic, or alternate ways of advancing through levels, uh, you are going to gain class features, get buffer with hit points, um, and uh, potentially have your various bonuses go up. So the, the key elements are here, but there are two primary ways that we can uh, advance that are commonly used, um, and they are laid out, I want to say, in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Experience points fuel level advancement for player characters and are most often the reward for completing combat encounters. Each monster has an XP value based on its challenge rating. When adventurers defeat one or more monsters, typically by killing, routing, or capturing them, they divide the total XP value of the monsters evenly among themselves. Uh, and then the Dungeon Master's Guide contains guidelines for assigning XP rewards for non-combat challenges, uh, for handling characters who might not be in the game. And uh, this... There we go. Here's what I'm trying to get to. Milestones, an alternate way of determining either XP or straight up leveling without XP. You can do away with experience points entirely and control the rate of character advancement. Advanced characters based on how many sessions they play, when they accomplish significant story goals in the campaign. In either case, you tell the players when the characters gain a level. Uh, so first big question from that long introduction in terms of XP. Now, as players, it's usually not up to us. Um, but Sam and Michael, do you have a preference between uh, XP-based and milestone-based leveling? Uh, and have you found them to be particularly different, if so? Michael? Well, I've never played in a game that actually used XP leveling in D&D. So I... I'm only really familiar with milestone leveling where you're leveling up as you're hitting like new chapters in the adventure or in homebrew games, you're hitting certain story beats or certain moments where your character is having some big, like sort of emotional shift or, you know, you've completed some big side quest. So I have to say that I am a big fan of that, um, especially as a dungeon master, because it helps me, uh, not worry so much about the particular encounters, like, I guess, like the difficulty of the encounters and the particular monsters I'm using. It lets me just kind of say, like, I want them to face off against this, and I'm not worried that I'm going to level them up, you know, two times over if they happen to just completely demolish it in one round. Do you know what I mean? Damn thoughts? As Michael's response and the two different sources for leveling up indicate there really is the lovely separation of concerns on which I find myself the player's side, I usually level up whenever the GM hecking tells me to. You know, fair. But I have played in 
a couple of XP based games and overall advancement in any RPG will give you a set of incentives. And that's a difference between XP based and milestone based leveling. You create a different set of incentives. I think noted ornithological fanboy Brendan Lee Mulligan once sent up wizards by saying if they want to be better at wizarding, they don't read books, they go out and they kill things because it gets you XP in an XP-based system. Milestones, as an alternate rule, allow a GM to incentivize a different set of behaviors, whether that's showing up to the sessions and you get that, cool, that goes toward the advancement, or in fact, toward a different set of criteria altogether. Milestones let you reward players for discovery or hitting good story beats. It's an incentive system and it is a tool set that game masters can use whenever they want or very simply do what many of my GMs do and tell the player to heck and level up when it feels right. <laughs> Trust in your gut and saying, yeah, you know, I think you've been at six for a while. It feels about right. Yeah, go on up to seven is a completely solid, totally valid way of not doing a whole lot of Excel spreadsheeting for your encounters. <laughs> I, I will say that. That, the, that there is one curse that comes with milestone leveling, and that is at the end of every session, I don't know, maybe your players are different, but at the end of every session, my players go, do we level up? <laughs> <laughs> So the, the art of leveling up for me uh, has something to do with the sort of the sense of, uh, you know, you're always trying to balance those basic concerns. If, if you're the GM and you're using something with an element of choice, or if you're designing stuff to fit those different posts, you don't want people to go so fast that they're getting new stuff before they've really fully enjoyed the stuff that they have or understand how to use it. And you also don't want people to get stuck never moving forward uh, and get tired of the things they can do. So that's, I think, the delicate balance that both ways are after. But what I find interesting, Sam, is that I think you've crystallized what I've observed from just one person's perspective in play over time, which is that coming from previous editions, I was sort of used to XP-based things. And the, the guidelines we just talked to in the Player's Handbook and Dungeon Master Guide, this guide, it explicitly says if you want to assign XP for non-combat things, you can. You can judge them based on easy, medium, hard, or deadly. Like, it, this was a, an extremely hard negotiation. You can just an, a, assign a hard amount of XP points. But I think in practice, from what I have seen, mostly people who are going with, who would otherwise go with that middle path, just kind of swapped it out for the like, let's skip the doing math part of that and be like, you did many hard things. I feel like you probably leveled, um, which is maybe not strictly We're what they right. intended by milestones, <laughs> but I feel like that's how many of us do it. It's fair. And where I have done uh, XP-based advancement in a game, often if my party has resolved what would have been an encounter by making friends, you get the exact same XP. It's a very, very common way if you are using the whole spreadsheet uh, to still encourage things other than purely the, the combat approach. So, there's also just combat. You can fight. There's not a ding dang thing wrong with that. That's also very fun. <laughs> it's totally valid. I had forgotten, actually, that they specify in here that defeating a monster could come in ways such as capturing, killing, or routing them. Um, from which, like, once you have that foundation, the like, or talking them out of it is just really a fourth one. Um, you're basically yeah. routing them. I, uh. Yeah. Da, 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 da. I am. Um, Loving some questions already coming in. Oh, I'm going to have to make sure to leave some time there. All right. The, we have talked about philosophies behind uh, leveling up and how it works. Um, but let's talk a little bit of nuts and bolts about how you do it in the D&D Beyond Builder. Which, when I was asking around where I was sort of like, what kind of questions do people tend to encounter on this? One of the things that tripped people up is if you are using either Milestone or XP leveling, it works slightly differently in our Builder. So to do this, to start with, I am going to quick build us a first level character because it is fun to play with. 
Um, I need <laughs> a race for it, Michael. Alan. <laughs> That's what I did for my test. <laughs> Amazing. Sam, we need a class. Artificer. Amazing. An Alan Artificer. Uh, and I note to our devs, we should put the randomizer on here. Um, but uh Clanky, the Alan Artificer, is what I'm going with. Love yes. It. I have just got you, and I love down. you. <laughs> All right. So let's say we have our first level Alan Artificer who's been you generated using the quick build things. Uh, which means they have a lot of standardized things already in place. They are going to need a picture uh, because that is going here in a second. Anyway, we need to see our adorable hit... Owlin baby. Yes, yeah. I understand. The anvil is always your best friend uh, of getting to your basics here. And I feel like... The one with the glasses? That one? <laughs> That's a clunky. Wait, this one? Yes. yes. I love it. I love it very much. This is clanky. That is the face of Why a first character. Optimistic. <laughs> yes. Ready to take on the world and gain some new levels. Um. All right. So let's say we're we're in the game. We've been perhaps our GM made us clanky for this for today's thing. We've completed our first set of major fights and obstacles. Uh, and the DM says. Good news, you are now level two. Uh, what we do first is that levels are primarily managed from the class tab of your sheet. Now, if you've never looked at this before, you might want to dip over to these options, which I often tell people to kind of ignore when you're brand new. But on the first page, some of your basic set uh, options are on this tab here, advancement type is what we've just been talking about, milestone versus XP. So this character is currently set to milestone. And if we uh, want to switch it, we will get an informative warning. Are you sure you want to change your advancement method? You will begin with the base XP value for your current level. If we go back, it will warn us, are you, want to sh are you sure you want to change the milestone? The values that we've put in will be lost. So you can set this either way you want it. Um, if we stick with XP, um, we haven't talked about hit points yet, so let's leave that one alone for now. The only complication that uh, can arise for these really is that if you say, all right, we gained 500 XP from this adventure and you apply it, you're going to get a little hopeful warning up here that says, actually, you should be higher than character level one. Hey. Um, so and a know, little thing here, <laughs> because we have enough XP to have gained another class level. Um, so this tab, which is the same one you're going to use for milestone to just set things, um, we should actually be up in level two. Now our little warnings go away because we're all correctly in line. Um, and as you noticed, now that we're at level two, a few more things have unlocked for our artificer, including some choices. Now, just to just for the fun of it, um, if we want to go back down, it will always warn you because you don't want to mess around with this. Um, this will take our XP down to match the new level. Um, I took it out entirely, which is not 100% what I intended, but now we've seen how that works. Um, so Linky we, let's keeps say changing we... majors. <laughs> yeah. Like he's like, do I want to <laughs> work with machinery? Do I want to be a wizard? <laughs> Every level, uh, he, just, he just completely swaps everything out. <laughs> just going to put him back at 500 here. All right. The other way, if we're going, if for some reason, we wanted to do this and go down manually, it will warn us, uh-oh, you're too high. Um, I really just wanted to show this error thingy. Uh, and we'd have to go back down to level one. Mm. Useful if you've accidentally entered one too many zeros, which I have never done and I'm saying for absolutely no reason. I actually don't know what happens if we, we, wow, just 11 levels under where we should be, apparently, with my typo there. Um, Clanky, you're a mess. <laughs> the clank of many things. There's a card for that. 
<laughs> I so you can you can skip around here, but essentially the point of this part of the demonstration is you just want to make sure that your class levels and your XP levels stay in line and to stay tuned to those warnings because uh, you deserve to enjoy all the benefits of getting to that next level. But speaking of which, if we're gonna let's swap to milestone, it's gonna throw out all the math we just did. Um, we're still level twelve, but let's say we were back down to level one. A few things are going to happen when we set this up to level two. Um, it's pretty straightforward in terms of how, boom, level two, at least as when you're gaining. But you'll notice that our hit points went up. Just going to swap. We had nine, and now we have 15. Now, that one is a result of another choice that we made uh, back here on the tab, which is to use the hit point leveling up type. Meaning you have an option to take try your luck uh, with a roll of the die when you add a class level and level up, or you have the option to take the average, which has a, you know, it's a, a cost benefit. Quick question: Do y'all have preferences between these types and why? Sam, I... I'm a standard array fixed HP person. I don't trust my dice. My dice have given me every reason not to. And if I think if they think I'm going to let them have control when they do not absolutely need to, they have another think coming after that third <laughs> nap one in a row. <laughs> think those small dice are any better? No, they all betray me. Standard array, <laughs> fixed HP, dice trust issues. Amazing, Michael. I'm generally not a gambling man, so I will generally use fixed HP. Um, I will request it as a player. And by the way, this if if you're a new player and you're looking at this particular page in the character builder and you're like, I don't know what to choose, I like to look at this page as a nice guide for a session zero. Questions you might ask your dungeon masters like, are we using fixed or are we rolling HP? Are we going to use feeds? Are we going to use multi-classing requirements? So um, don't be intimidated by this particular page. I think if you're just theory crafting, you're just kind of toying around, just do whatever feels right to you or whatever you think looks uh, the most fun. For me, fixed HP is the way to go because I do not trust the dice. I love it. When too, I have, too I've rolled well. It's just a fair... Yeah. They're trying to lull me into a false sense of complacency, I tell you. I mean, I'm just saying, if the dice know you don't trust them, how are you ever going to build the foundation that would get you to those super <laughs> overpowered, no one believes you rolled this uh, character numbers? Mm -hmm. that's the other thing. So you will see that that's why we get that natural increase when we level up with this system. If we want to, to not do that, to take our chances. Hmm? Oh, I oh, should show the warning a little more slowly. Are you sure you want to change to fixed? Any of your rolled numbers will be lost. Are you sure you want to change to manual? After this, you're going to need to go and do it yourself. Now, this is why it's very smart, uh, just to compliment our own coworkers, that we put uh, these class management levels on, uh, sorry, these level management features on the class tab. Uh, HP doesn't necessarily belong here, but because your initial HP is determined by your class and the level up types, they just, just it's very nice and efficient that it's here. So what we've got right now, I think it, rolled for us or what's our constitution let's see our constitution is at a plus one um i'm just going to take it down to one for simplicity there we go so your first level artificer is always going to have eight plus constitution um as as a starting hit point now when we go up to level two uh it only went up one because we haven't rolled yet so don't forget this part if you're doing rolled hp you have to actually do it um could could we right roll now, clinky's second level hit points I, i'm very curious how clinky did on oh this heck level yeah with um so <laughs> to do that i would ordinarily just go here because it's fun um but we need a d8 to tell us how many hit points we're going to add and the reason i'm saying d8 is that is determined by the class we're adding for now we're assuming we're going to continue in artificer school clinky has changed their mind several times and landed on progressing into being more of an artificer. So I'm going to get out a D8. 
that's not it. Aha, I know what dice are. Are we ready? Can I get a drum roll? Ooh, a six. <gasps> Here we go. This is the, the gambling paid off. <laughs> uh, to put this into practice on our page, my anvil here. Hmm? We rolled a six out of a possible eight on our level two new hit points. So, um, eight is already plugged in here because that's our first level amount. We're going to add a six to it. So essentially either go up by six or just type 14. It's going to add the constitution by itself. It's not necessarily clear to look at that this is showing you the plus one from level one and the plus one from level two. Um, but that will also re-math if your constitution goes up later. Um, it's going to let you know the range of values so you can kind of tell whether your math went horribly wrong, which I appreciate. Mm -hmm. It's going to explain how this stuff works. <laughs> and here we are with a nice beefy 16 points at level two for Clanky the Artificer. And that's why gambling is great and everyone should do it. <laughs> <laughs> See, and the dice even rolled nicely to be like, See, I'm not threatening. <laughs> ruin your HP. Trust me. <laughs> so, of course, then we get into the question of what actually happens for your character at the new level ups. And once again, it's pretty straightforward in terms of you can read ahead and see what's going to unlock. Uh, but the thing that I do every time, uh, if you're having, uh, I have water or tea at home and I am playing along, uh, Amy's going to say, I go look it up. Mm -hmm. Because you can go to your class <laughs> yep. information and see my favorite thing, which is this table of what happens now that I have reached my new level. It looks intimidating at first, but it is your best friend because every spell casting class is going to work a little bit differently in terms of how those changes go through. Uh, and the features that you gain and the new things for them are going to be different based on your class. And all the information you need is right here uh, for your level ups. So. That's the basic nuts and bolts. You make those changes, you make those choices, your new character is ready to go, um, but you have options within that. So I would love to know philosophically, Michael, when it's time to level up, what kinds of things guide your choices? Well, I like to plan ahead, like a lot. I will spend hours as a first level character thinking about what third level spells I'm working up to. Um, so I like to map things out. I like to consider first off, like what, who is my character? What's their background? What thematically works for them? But I do care about optimization as well. So I do take that into account as well. So if I'm like, my character is a fire mage, perhaps um, I'm going to be leaning toward those iconic spells like chromatic orb which yes can deal fire damage but if in the moment i need to switch up the damage type is going to give me that option um and then i also consider like what kind of story arc am i going for am i a fire mage who dislikes the use of fire but uses it out of necessity so then maybe as um, i'm looking ahead to higher level spells i'll start considering like what are my utility spells maybe i'm going to be looking at like hypnotic pattern or less damage oriented spells and then kind of as i level up and get closer to that make adjustments according to how my character's particular story is going very cool sam what is your philosophical approach to leveling up well in order to get a diverse array of opinions on this show there are uh two uh risk averse optimization minded gamers <laughs> guesting here today um but in all seriousness i don't oh, although i often like to have a plan i also very much love to throw away the plan so although i often start building my first character with an eye to where i could see them in 5 years so to speak uh what they might look like down the line when it comes time that we start asking our GM after every session, hey, did I level up? Uh, I 
will step back and evaluate, hey, what are the options I have right now? What has been going on in the story? Am I still kind of on my plan? Or over the course of gaming, have I discovered I want to throw away the plan? Sometimes we will take class options or make choices about advancing our characters uh, based on what we've experienced in the story. But another thing you can do is if you know that you kind of want to go in this direction, you can talk with your GM. And that's that's also on my bingo square. You can talk to your GM about it. Uh, because <laughs> I've had GMs who will give me a nice little mini story arc or something so that if I want to, say, uh, switch to a new class, which we'll get in a bit, uh, if I want to make some out there choice, I don't just have to react and wait to see whether or not that kind of story happens. I can say, hey, hey, Game Master. I'm not asking whether we leveled up yet. I promise. I promise. This time I'm not. Um, but before we do, could you help me set this up? Because I want to do this, that, and the other. And gosh darn it, GMs are such nice people. They'll accommodate. They're lovely, lovely folks. Indeed. It's the end.